So here we are back again for our fifth year of my best and worst screen protectors videos. And this time we're going to be testing out the ones for the Galaxy S23 Plus. Now I want to give a huge thank you to everyone who's supported me over these past five years. And if you're new here and you want to show your support for me, all you need to do is hit that like button to show me that you care that I'm doing this for you and consider subscribing to my channel. Now, as you can see, we have quite a few screen protectors to be tested here. And some of the screen protectors in this list were actually recommended by viewers like you. So if you have a screen protector that you'd like to see included in these videos, definitely let me know in the comments below. And I will also be putting links in the description in case you guys want to pick up any of these screen protectors yourself, as well as timestamps because this is going to be a lengthy video. But stick with me because I guarantee you're going to find one screen protector here you're going to absolutely love. I will also be doing a scratch and a drop test so we can see which screen protectors are actually going to be worth your time. And I've also read all of your comments in the past videos wanting me to give you my recommendation on which screen protectors I would actually use myself and I will give that to you at the end of the video. But for now, grab your snacks, sit back and relax and enjoy the video. So really quick, I just want to let you know before I do every single screen installation, I will be thoroughly cleaning off the screen with an alcohol wipe and then drying it off. And you should too. I'm not going to show it to you every single time, so that's out of the way. And then here we have AM Films Tempered Glass Screen Protector. So you get a giant dust removal sticker, an installation packet, two rear camera protectors, and two screen protectors. Now AM Film makes it really easy to install their screen protectors. All you need to do is take their one screen protector here, make sure the top signifier is going towards the camera on your phone, then all we need to do is peel off the little protector on the underside here. There's a little tab that says step one. Just peel that off. And then don't touch the underside. Then all you need to do is place this over your phone. It should line up perfectly with your phone. And then just press it into place and run your finger down the middle just like that. As you can see, the screen protector pretty much adhered to the whole phone. Then all you need to do is put your finger on the inside here, just lift up very carefully, remove your finger, and then lift up the rest of the way, and you're all done. Super simple, I absolutely love it. As you can see, the insulation is perfect. There is a slight gap all the way around the edge of the phone for case friendliness, which is awesome. There's also a little cutout for your camera so it won't interfere with your selfie pictures. As far as the feel goes, feels nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. So now what you want to do is re-register your fingerprints if you've already done so. Touch working perfect, everything is nice and smooth. It is also nice and clear. So now we'll register our fingerprints. Okay, so we're all set up. Now we'll test out our fingerprints. Working perfectly fine, very nice. No problems there, awesome. So like I said before, touch, nice and smooth, working beautiful. No problems there. So now let's put it in a case. So in case you're wondering, this is the Spigen Rugged Armor case one of my favorites. It does pick up fingerprints just a little bit. So it does do a really good job at fingerprint rejection. As you can see, it doesn't pick up a lot of fingerprints, just a, just little remnants of them. But any fingerprints that are on the screen, you can just very easily wipe away. As you can see, it fits perfectly with this case. There is still a slight edge around the corner of the phone. So there is no lifting whatsoever. Absolutely love these screen protectors and I use them on all of my Galaxy devices as well. So now let's install the rear camera protector. All you need to do first is clean it off thoroughly with alcohol wipe, then dry it off. Then you can install your screen protector. So all we need to do is simply hold onto the screen protector and peel back the plastic backing. Then don't touch the underside and then just place them over the camera lenses. 
and then just press them in place. So that's what it looks like on the phone. Now your lenses are all protected and it doesn't add a lot of extra bulk to the camera lenses themselves either. Now the only thing you have to worry about is if you use a case like this where it doesn't have a full cutout, you won't be able to use that rear screen protector. Just something to keep in mind. And as far as the cameras goes, as you can see, it is still crystal clear. See how good the focus is? <laughs> really quick. <laughs> no problems there. All right, so let's test out the scratch protection. So we're gonna first start off with a level five and we'll go on from there. Typically, screen protectors start to scratch around a level six. So I'm gonna start off with one lower at a level five. So that was level five. Now we'll move on to a number six. and then a number seven. So if we take a closer look, as you can see, there's no scratches at the level five. There is at a level six and a little deeper at the level seven. So it's pretty much on par with other tempered glass screen protectors. Not bad. So now we're gonna do the drop test for the tempered glass screen protector. We're gonna start off at two feet. All right, here we are at three feet. Here we go at four feet. Here we go at five feet. All right, here we go at six feet. Here we are at seven feet. No cracks yet at seven feet. We're going for eight. Here we go, eight feet. <laughs> no cracks at eight feet. All right, so the highest I can go is eight and three quarters feet. If it doesn't break or crack on that, then it's going to probably be one of the best screen protectors. Here we go at eight and three quarters feet. Holy cow. So it didn't crack, but it made like this little dimple. Not bad at all. I am impressed. So this is the AM film tempered glass screen protector that we just drop tested at eight and three quarters feet. And as you can see, it has not cracked. This little dimple you see here, I don't need, I can't even feel it on top of the glass here. I've only had a couple other screen protectors last up until the eight and three quarters feet height, and this is one of them. So if you want some of the best drop protection, this screen protector is going to be one of them. So now let's move on to our scratch test. We're gonna start off with the number five, then move on to the number six, and then finally, the number seven. Oh, it cracked with that one. Let's try it up here. All right, so let's take a closer look here. As you can see, there's no scratches at the level five. There is very slight at the level six and looks like it's still slight at the level seven. So this screen protector is definitely going to be the one to beat. Again, I am super impressed with it all around. This screen protector seems to probably be one of the best tempered glass screen protectors for the Galaxy S23 Plus. Installation was super easy. As you saw, drop test was fantastic. Scratch protection is also really good. I have no choice but to give this screen protector two thumbs up. And then here we have the Spigen Glass TR Easy Fit. So here we get two tempered glass screen protectors a rubber squeegee, and some installation stickers and wipes. So Spigen also makes it really easy for you to install these screen protectors. All you need to do is take one of your screen protectors, make sure you see the top signifier pointing upward. That's going to go towards your camera on your phone. Then we just need to peel off this little sticker that says back on here. Make sure you don't peel off the glass with it. Then once you peel that off, don't touch the underside and then just line it up with your phone and press it into place. 
slide your finger down the middle. Then we're going to wait 30 seconds. Then remove the sticker from the top here. Just hold press down on the screen protector guide while you're pulling this up. And then stick your finger in the middle and then pull up on the little guide here. And there you go. So we're going to take our squeegee here and try to get out some of these bubbles before we remove the top protector. That one came out really easy. We'll do the same thing for the other two. That one came out easy as well. One more. And that one's out too. So not a problem at all. That's why they give you the squeegee. So now all you need to do is peel up the protector. Very nice installation. This is a full coverage screen protector, which means it does cover your camera. So if you're worried about that, then you're probably going to want to stay away from this. But it does seem to be a really nice screen protector. It does have a slight gap around the edges. We'll see if it's case friendly. As far as the touch goes, super smooth. It feels just like the glass that's on the phone. Touch works perfectly fine. We'll register our fingerprints again. All right, so we're all set. Let's test out our fingerprints. Beautiful, working perfect. So fingerprints, definitely a plus on the screen protector. Let's put it in our Spigen case here. Give it a little wipe down. Okay, so in the Spigen case, it looks like it doesn't leave any gap. It comes right up to the edge of the case, except for on the top there, there is a slight gap. As far as fingerprints goes, It picks up minimal fingerprints, but again, you can very easily wipe those away with hardly any effort. Very nice. So yeah, this screen protector <laughs> fits perfectly, uh, at least with the Spigen cases. I don't see any lifting, so that is definitely a plus. So, so far so good. Everything is looking great. Let's move on to the drop test. We're going to start off at two feet. All right, we're moving on to three feet. Moving on to four feet. Moving on to five feet. Moving on to six feet. Nothing yet. Moving on to seven feet. Here we are at eight feet. All right, and there it is, eight feet. So I'm pretty impressed. I honestly didn't think it was gonna last up to eight feet because when I took the screen protector off the phone and put it on here, I felt that it was super thin and flimsy. So I didn't think it was gonna last that long, but wow, very respectable. So far, so good. Let's move on to the scratch test. So first we're gonna start off with a level five and then move on to the level six. And then finally the level seven. All right, so if we take a closer look here, as you can see, there's no scratches at the level five. There's a little deeper at the level six and deeper than that at the level seven. So very respectable. It's on par with all the other tempered glass screen protectors. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Installation was very easy. Scratch protection is great, and drop protection seems to be really good as well. So I'm definitely going to give this one a thumbs up. So here we have Bases Tempered Glass Screen Protector and Tempered Glass Camera Protectors. So we get one screen protector and an installation packet. Now the nice thing about this screen protector is they give you two little guides to hold on to while you're placing the screen protector down. What I would probably do is if you have a case, put your phone in the case and then put the screen protector down so it'll be a lot easier to line up. 
All right, then all you need to do is peel off the underside one protector and then don't touch the underside after you've done so. And then just line it up with your phone. Then once it's down, just kind of run your finger up the middle here. Now it looks like we do have a little bubble in the middle here, but we can very easily get rid of that without any problems. So all we need to do is kind of lift up on the screen protector in the corner. Use your fingernail, just lift up very carefully. Wait until the bubble goes away. And then just release and then just squeegee down with your finger. Now once you get all your bubbles out, all you need to do is simply lift up on the little tab here. And you're all done. So installation was really nice, not a problem there. And we know that it is case friendly. We can also see the gap all the way around the phone. So it should be case friendly with pretty much any case that you're going to use. There is a cutout for your camera, so you don't have to worry about it interfering with your pictures. As far as touch goes, super smooth, very nice. Now we'll re-register our fingerprints. Touch working great. Okay, fingerprints inputted, let's test them out. No problems there, no problems there. All right, working perfectly fine. And as you can see, it is crystal clear. Again, super smooth, no problems with touch. Everything's working very nice there. All right, so far so good. Let's go ahead and move on to the drop test. We're gonna start off at two feet. Here we go at three feet. Moving on to four feet. Moving on to five feet. Moving on to six feet. Oh, six feet. All right, so we made it to six feet for the drop test. Not bad at all. Let's go ahead and move on to the scratch test. We're gonna start off with a level five. Then move on to our level six. And then finally a level seven. So let's take a look. So as you can see, there's no scratches at the level five. They're very slight at a level six and a little deeper at a level seven. So <laughs> all around great protection. It was pretty easy to install. As you saw, scratch protection is on par, if not a little better than other tempered glass screen protectors. And we lasted up to six feet for the drop test. So definitely a plus. I'm going to give the screen protector a thumbs up. So now let's install the rear tempered glass camera protector. First, you wanna clean off your lenses really well and around the lenses too. Then dry everything off. Then you're gonna take your lens protector, you're gonna peel off the back plastic, making sure not to touch the underside. And then just place this over the camera lenses. And then just press it into place. All right, so let's check out our cameras real quick. As you can see, it is nice and clear. It doesn't add a lot of extra bulk to the phone. Test out our cameras. As you can see, it is crystal clear. No problems there. Now let's see how quick the focus is. <laughs> very quick, no problems there. All right, everything's looking good. Very clean, very clear. No issues with the camera. Very nice. So now let's do a little scratch test. Again, we'll start off with the level five. Then we'll move on to the level six. And then finally the level seven. So if we look closer, as you can see, there's no scratches at the level five here. There are slight at the level six 
and a little deeper at the level 7. So again, it's on par with other tempered glass screen protectors. Not bad. Then here we have the Zag Fusion XTR Eco. So we get one film screen protector, an installation guide, a squeegee, and some installation material. Then you're going to want to take your installation guide and make sure that the top portion is at the top towards the camera of your phone. We're going to take our phone and place it into the guide just like that. And you can just press down on it with the little wipe so you don't get any fingerprints just to make sure that it's down where it needs to be. Get rid of any dust with the dust sticker. Then take your screen protector and we're going to remove the number one on the underside here. Once you've taken it off, don't touch the underside of the screen. And then just make sure that the camera cutout here goes towards the top of your phone. Then just place the little holes over the guide posts in the guide. Make sure the screen protector does not touch the screen yet. Do the same thing for the bottom here. Then you want to take your squeegee. We're going to press down in the middle of the screen protector and just squeegee towards the top of the phone. Then turn your phone around, take the squeegee, put it behind this line here, and then squeegee down towards the bottom. Once you've done that, you want to remove the little tabs from the posts here. Then you want to peel up the top screen protector, making sure that it doesn't take the screen protector below it with it. And then you can take out your phone from the guide. Not bad at all. It, that looks beautiful. Very nice installation, very clean, no bubbles whatsoever. It does have a little cutout for your camera, so it's not going to mess with your pictures. Touch is grippy. That's, that's the only downside. It does have like a little grip to it. I don't know if you can see my finger kind of vibrating from the touch, but it's very grippy. I'm not a huge fan of that. I like when I move my finger, it just kind of it just kind of glides just like glass. I don't I don't care for that. So that's one thing to note. Touch seems to be working just fine. Let's re-register our fingerprints. So now we'll add our fingerprints. Okay, fingerprints are inputted. We'll go ahead and test them out. Working perfectly fine. No problems with the fingerprint sensor. As you can see, it does look pretty clear even though it's got that blue tint to it. Very nice. Touch, working perfectly fine. Again, it's just, it's got that that rubbery type feel to it, which I don't care for, but touch is working perfectly fine. Let's put it in our case. As far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints. Let's see how easy it is to wipe away because of the grip. Not too bad. It just, again, it's not smooth like glass, but the fingerprints do wipe away fairly easily. Now, as far as case compatibility goes, we do still have a little gap all the way around the phone, so that is not bad at all. Seems to fit pretty good, but the only way to really know if it's going to work with your case is to try it out, unfortunately. But it does seem to be case friendly, so not too bad at all. Fingerprints <laughs> work really well with this. Uh, they typically do with the film screen protectors, um, but again, if you if you don't like that grip, like if you don't like this that grippiness, you might not like this screen protector. Um, so this isn't going to be the best for scratch protection or drop protection, but it will protect your screen from scratches. So installation was very easy. It went on super smooth. There's no bubbles. Touch, again, it's got that grippiness, but it worked perfectly fine. Works perfectly fine with the in-display fingerprint sensor as well. So if your main concern is scratch protection, I would definitely think that you would like the screen protector unless you don't like the grippiness. That would be the only thing. So I would definitely give this screen protector a thumbs up. So just to be thorough, I'm going to test out the scratch resistance. We're going to be starting off with a number two, which is simply just plastic. And we'll see how it goes from there. 
So there does seem to be a little bit of warping on the screen from the level two, as you can see, but there's no scratches yet. So we'll move on to the level three, which is copper. So that didn't last very long. As you can see, there were some kind of weird markings from the plastic pick. And then we moved on to the copper, and as you can see, it immediately scratched the screen. So things like your fingernail or maybe some plastic in your purse or something like that will kind of give it these weird little markings, but they should heal anything more than a plastic. Something like your keys, anything like that, will definitely scratch this screen. So that's just something to keep in mind. And here we have Rinky's Privacy Tempered Glass Screen Protector. So here we get a little installation guide, one screen protector, and your installation packet. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to take your guide. We're going to take off the top of it, exposing the little pins. Then you want to make sure the little pins are facing up towards you. And we're going to use the little side that looks like a little C. And we're going to press that into the bottom of our phone. Then we're going to clean the screen off. Then we're going to dry it off. Then you're going to want to take your screen protector, pay close attention to these little holes at the bottom. We're going to put those over the little posts in the guide. So first you want to peel off the little protector on the underside of the screen. As you can see by this little tab, make sure it's on the underside of the protector. Just peel that off. Don't touch the underside of the screen protector. Then place those little holes over the guide. Just press those into place and then just lay down your screen protector. Once it's down, just run your finger right up the middle and it should adhere to the screen. Once that's done, we want to peel up the tab from these little posts here. Then very carefully peel up the blue protector and then you can remove the guide. And there we go. Perfect installation, no bubbles whatsoever. It also looks like it is case friendly because it has a nice gap all the way around the phone. It also has a little cutout for your camera so it's not gonna interfere with your, your pictures. As far as touch, super smooth, very nice. Just like the glass that's on the phone, touch seems to be working perfectly fine, very smooth. I also wanna turn up the brightness all the way up. Now we'll re-register our fingerprints. All right, so let's go ahead and test out our fingerprints. No problems there. Perfectly fine. Very nice. So no problems with fingerprints. As you can see, it's still pretty clear. It might dim the brightness down just a little bit because it is a privacy screen protector, but you can very easily still see what's on the screen. And then if we turn the screen to the side, you can't see anything, and then you can. That is so cool. <laughs> I love that so much. Okay, so screen protector installation, very nice. Everything seems to be working with touch. Fingerprint sensor works perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and put it in a case. Now, as far as fingerprints goes, seems to do a great job at fingerprint rejection. The little smudges that are on there, you can just very easily wipe away without any problems. Very nice. It does fit perfectly fine within this case and we still have a slight gap all the way around the phone. So it should work with other cases as well. So now let's move on to the drop test. Starting off at two feet. We're gonna move up to three feet. Four feet. five feet, six feet, and it looks like six feet might have done it. Yep, six feet. 
So I'm definitely impressed with those drop test results. For six feet, for a tempered glass screen protector, that's a privacy screen. If you've watched any of my past best and worst videos, you'll know that I don't have very good luck with privacy screen protectors lasting probably more than three feet. So for six feet, definitely a plus. So let's move on to the scratch protection. So first we're gonna start off with the number five. Then we're gonna move on to the number six. Then a number seven. All right, so let's take a closer look. So as you can see, there's no scratches at the level five. There are a little deeper at a level six and even deeper than that at a level seven. And again, that's pretty much on par with other tempered glass screen protectors. So installation was really easy. Touch, very nice, works perfectly fine with the in-display fingerprint sensor. We have six feet for the drop protection and the scratch protection is, again, it's on par with other tempered glass screen protectors. So I would definitely recommend the screen protector if you want a privacy screen protector and I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. And then here we have Super Shield's tempered glass screen protectors. So you get three tempered glass screen protectors and one giant installation packet, and one giant installation packet. So the best thing to do would be to take your case if you're using one, put the phone in the case, and then line the screen protector up because that'll give you a better fit than not using the case that you're gonna be using with your phone. And if you're not using a case, you can still use this method. So what I would recommend doing is getting one of your tempered glass screen protectors, making sure that the step one tab is on the underside of your tempered glass screen protector, just like that. Then take your guide stickers and we're going to put a guide sticker on each end of the screen protector. So it should end up looking something like that. So then peel off the underside protector then just hold on to each one of these stickers on the end and place it down on your screen the best you can. Then once it's in place, just run your finger right up the middle of the screen protector and it should adhere to the whole screen. Then just take your guide stickers off. Now it looks like we do have some bubbles in each of the corners here, but that's not a problem. We can just easily push those out. You can use your finger or even better if you have a squeegee that would work too. And there we go. So very nice installation. There are no more bubbles. And there is a, a very, very slight gap all the way around this screen. So it may or may not work with the case that you're going to use. You just have to try it and find out, unfortunately. This screen protector does have a cutout for your camera. As far as touch goes, feels just like the glass that's on the phone itself. And if you're wondering, this is a Spigen Rugged Armor case. So now let's register our fingerprints. Fingerprints are registered, so now we'll test them out. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine. For some reason, the fingerprint sensor wasn't picking up my right thumb, and it's probably because it's super dry right now. As far as the screen goes, it is crystal clear. Very nice, touch, working perfectly fine, no issues whatsoever. Again, it's nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. All right, so, so far so good. It seems to be somewhat case friendly. Uh, touch working fine, fingerprint sensors working fine. Let's go ahead and move on to the drop test. This is for the Super Shields tempered glass screen protector at two feet. Here we are at three feet. Four feet. Four feet.
So the Super Shield screen protector cracked at four feet. That's definitely not the worst, but it's not even close to being the best. So let's go ahead and move on to the scratch protection. All right, we're gonna start off at number five. Then move on to a number six. And then a number seven. All right, so if we take a closer look here, as you can see, there's no scratches at the level five. There are light scratches at a level six and even deeper with a little crack at a level seven. So the scratch protection is definitely on par with other tempered glass screen protectors. As far as the draw protection, like I said, it's definitely not the best and it's not the worst. It's it's kind of like a little bit above the, the worst. So installation was easy. There were no bubbles, seemed to work really well with the fingerprint sensor, but because you can get better drop protection, I would probably tell you to stay away from this screen protector and I'm gonna give it a thumbs down. All right, and then here we have a screen protector by Whiskin. And here we get two screen protectors that feel like they're film, but they say they're 9H hardness. So we'll find out. You get two rear camera protectors installation material, a really big drying cloth, and an installation guide. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to take your installation guide, make sure you take the part that says up and put it towards the camera on the phone and just press it over the phone just like this. Then you're gonna take your screen protector, make sure the little camera cutout is towards the top and we're gonna put that towards the top of the phone. We're going to peel off the bottom protector here just like this. Make sure you don't touch the underside after you've done so, and then just line up the holes with the little posts on the guide, making sure that the screen protector does not touch the screen yet. So it does look like these holes are a little misaligned, so just kind of put that on the best you can. Then we're gonna take the squeegee, we're gonna start in the middle, and then push towards the bottom. Then we're going to turn it around, take your squeegee, put it behind where you started the first time, and then push forward. And then lift up on that protector. Then take your fingers and slowly lift up on the guide, making sure you don't take the screen protector with it. And then squeegee out any bubbles that you might see. Looks like there's just maybe a little... We have a piece of dust underneath here. Squeegee that out. So the guide was a little off. If we look at the phone, you can see that the top has a huge gap and the bottom has absolutely no gap. So there might be a problem using cases with the screen protector. As far as touch goes, it is nice and smooth. Got a little bubble in the corner here. Just push that out. Let's register our fingerprints. Now, because this is a privacy screen protector, it's going to dull the screen a little bit, so you might have to turn your brightness up more than usual. Seems to register the fingerprints just fine. Now let's test them out. No problems there, it's actually really quick. Very nice. So the fingerprint sensor is working just fine. As you can see, the screen is pretty clear, but again, I do have the brightness all the way up. And if we turn the phone to the side, the screen disappears. Very cool. So not bad at all. So this did not seem like a tempered glass screen protector, but it stated that it had 9H hardness. I'm kind of skeptical. I'm going to do a very small scratch test, maybe in a little corner, just to see how much it takes to scratch the screen. And based on that, we'll move on to the drop test. So we're gonna start off with a level five. Just as I suspected. This may be a film screen protector, but it might have a glass sandwiched in the middle of it. But at a level five, as you can see, it scratched the screen protector, which is not normal. So I would definitely think that this screen would scratch at a lot less. So now I'm gonna test it with a level four and we'll see what happens. Again, it scratches the screen immediately. So this is not a tempered glass screen protector. It's film, maybe with glass sandwiched in the middle. 
so it does not have 9H hardness. So there's no drop test for this screen protector, but I'm going to take it off and I'll show you what I mean by the glass being sandwiched in the middle. But first, let's put it in our case. So as you can see at the bottom here, there is no gap at all. And at the top, there's a huge gap. So <laughs> that alignment was way off. This may be uh, case friendly, but because of the way that it's installed with the guide, you're gonna have troubles here if your case pushes up on the screen protector at all. But it seems to fit right now on mine. So this is just a thick film screen protector. I don't see any glass sandwiched in the middle whatsoever. I bent it and there's no cracking and you should see like little cracks and things if there was glass in here. So because of all of these things, I would definitely tell you to stay away from this screen protector and I'm definitely gonna give it a thumbs down. So here we have a film screen protector by Mouse. So you get two film screen protectors. I know this is only one, but I've already used one and some installation tools and a guide. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to take your guide, make sure you have the top portion facing towards the camera on your phone. Just place the phone inside the guide, just like that. Then take your screen protector, making sure that the little camera hole here is going towards the top of your phone and make sure you see the white part of the sticker, not the green. We're going to peel off that underside protector then just line up the holes on the screen protector with the posts on the guide. Make sure the screen protector does not touch the screen. Then you're going to take your anti-bubble card. We're going to use it as a squeegee. We'll put it in the middle of the screen and just push forward towards the top of the phone. Then we're going to turn it around and do the same thing for the bottom. Make sure the card goes behind the line here. And then just push forward. If you don't see any bubbles, all you need to do is peel up one of the little sides here. Be very careful not to take the screen protector with it. Then you can take your phone out of the guide and then you can squeegee out any bubbles you might see. All right, looks pretty good. Very nice. It does look like it has a rather large gap all the way around the screen protector, so it should be case friendly with pretty much any case you're gonna use on the phone. It does have a cutout for your camera as well. As far as touch goes, feels pretty smooth. Not as smooth as the glass, but pretty close. Let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints are working perfectly fine. And if your fingerprints aren't working after you install the screen protector, just go in and re-register your fingerprints and make sure that your fingers aren't dry like mine because that will affect the sensor's capability to detect your fingerprints too. As you can see, it is nice and clear. Touch, working perfectly fine. No issues there whatsoever. Very nice. Let's put it in our case. This is the Spigen Rugged Armor case, in case you're wondering. And as you can see, it still has a pretty good gap all the way around the edge of the screen protector, even when it's in a case. So you should be pretty safe if you wanna use this screen protector with your case as well. Now, because this is not a tempered glass screen protector, I'm only going to do the scratch test and not the drop test. We're gonna start off with a level two, and then we'll move up from there and we'll see how well it does with scratches. So again, here is the level two. This is just simply plastic. So it doesn't seem to have any effect on the screen at all. <laughs> then again, the screen is plastic itself. So now we're gonna move on to a level three, which is copper. And it scratches the screen immediately. As you can see from there, that is not going to heal. So for a film screen protector, this seems to work out really well. It is case friendly. Installation was very easy. It's nice and clear. It works really good with the fingerprint sensor. Even though the screen protector scratches itself at a level three, it still will protect your phone screen from scratches. So for a film screen protector, I would give this one a thumbs up. And here we have the Protect On tempered glass screen protector. This is the Walmart brand. So here we get an installation guide, an installation packet, and one screen protector. 
All right, so you're gonna take your installation guide, make sure that the top is going towards the camera on your phone, and just press it over your phone. Just like that. Make sure it is flush with the sides of the phone. Then take your screen protector, peel off the underside protector from the glass, and then just drop it into place in the guide. Once that's done, just run your finger down the middle and it should adhere to the whole screen. So it seems like the screen protector is too long for the guide here, so it won't adhere to the bottom of the phone because it's stuck on the guide. So what we need to do now is just take off the guide and then just let it adhere by itself and we'll go from there. So for this one, it, you can't just really pull it up because it's kind of hooked on the underside of the phone, which I don't particularly like, especially because of this situation. But the easiest way to take this off is to kind of pull out the guide from one side and then just lift it up the rest of the way. And as you can see, the screen protector is adhering to the rest of the phone. So let's take a look here. It looks like the guide is a little off as well. As you can see, there's a huge gap on the side here. And if we look at the other side, there's really not a lot of gap. So the screen protector can get misaligned. It looks like there's no cutout for your camera at the top. And there is a gap on the bottom and the top as well. As far as touch, feels nice, just like the glass that's on the phone. Let's put it in our case. So it looks like it does fit in our case, but again, the screen protector alignment is off, but there still is a gap at the bottom and the top, and there's a little bit on each side as well. So now let's register our fingerprints. So after you install the screen protector, what you wanna do is go into display, go down to touch sensitivity and turn that on, and then we'll re-register our fingerprints. See if that helps. So fingerprints are not working well with this at all. I can only get up to like 39% and then it just does, doesn't want to do anymore. So fingerprint sensor is not working well with this screen protector uh, really at all. It is nice and clear. Again, touch, no issues, no problems there. So now let's move on to the drop test. Going to start off at two feet. We're going to move on to three feet. four feet, four feet. So the Protecton brand screen protector only lasted up until four feet, so that's definitely not the best. Let's move on to the scratch test. We're gonna start off at a number five, then move on to a number six, and then a number seven. We take a closer look here. There's no scratches at the level five. There are light at a level six and a little deeper at a level seven. Now, because this screen protector doesn't seem to work very well at all with the fingerprint sensor, we had issues with the installation. Drop protection really isn't that great. I would definitely tell you to stay away from this screen protector and I'm going to give it a thumbs down. There's just too many other screen protectors out there that give you much better drop protection and work with the fingerprint sensor. Then here we have a tempered glass screen protector by Maui, two rear camera tempered glass protectors, and a giant installation packet. So take your screen protector with the guide, make sure that the top signifier is going towards the camera on your phone, flip it over. We need to peel off this little blue protector right here. So just peel that off. and then just press this over the top of your phone. It should fit nicely in the guide. And then just run your finger up the middle here. Wait three seconds. As you can see, it's adhering to the screen already. All right, looking good. So all we need to do now is to take your two fingers, hold down on the phone, and just slowly lift up on the guide. As you can see, it's lifting from the phone then just remove your fingers and then hold the phone and remove the screen the rest of the way. 
And there we go. Perfect installation. Looks really good. We have our cutout for our little camera at the top. We do have a slight gap all the way around the phone for case friendliness. As far as touch, feels just like the glass that's on the phone. Very nice. It does look nice and clear. Touch, working perfectly fine. No problems there. So now let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints are working perfectly fine. And if you're having trouble with your fingerprints, all you need to do is after you've installed the screen protector, go into your settings and re-register your fingerprints. That should fix it and make sure your fingers aren't dry like mine are. So let's put it in our case. So it looks like it does fit in this case. This is a Spigen Rugged Armor case. It looks like there's a very slight edge all the way around the phone so there is no lifting fits pretty good as far as fingerprints goes it doesn't seem to pick up very many fingerprints at all so that's definitely nice so now let's move on to the drop test we're going to start off at two feet we're going to move on to three feet three feet. So this screen protector only lasted up to three feet for the drop protection. So that's not looking good so far. So let's move on to the scratch test. Going to start off with a number five, then move on to a number six, and then finally a number seven. So if we take a closer look, as you can see, there's no scratches at a level five. There are light at a level six and a little deeper at a level seven. So scratch protection is on par with all the other screen protectors. The fingerprint sensor works well. It seems to be case friendly, but the drop protection is not the best at all. So I would definitely say to skip this screen protector. There are much better ones that offer you better drop protection. And I would give this screen protector a thumbs down. All right, so let's install our camera lenses. Just make sure you wipe off your lenses really well and the areas around it. Then take one of your camera protectors, make sure the top goes towards the top of your phone. Just peel back the white plastic. Don't touch the underside of the protector. Place them over the lenses. They should fit nicely into place. And then just press down on the protector. And there you go. Looks pretty nice, very nice and clear and it doesn't look like it adds very much bulk to the phone. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is if you're gonna use a screen protector like this, make sure that your case doesn't have these precise cutouts and it's just all one piece cutout because you won't be able to use this case if you use this protector. Now we'll test out our camera. Camera looks nice and clear. Don't see any issues there. Everything looks really nice. Test out the focus really quick. Focus seems to be working just fine as well. Very nice. So that is the tempered glass screen protector for your rear cameras. So now let's test out the scratch resistance. Again, we're gonna start off with level five, then move on to a level six, then finally a level seven. And if we take a look, there's no scratches at the level five. There are sc slight scratches at the level six, and a little deeper at a level seven. So not too bad. Then here we have a tempered glass screen protector by PDD Kiss. So here we get an installation guide, an installation packet, and one screen protector. So the first thing you're gonna do is to take your guide, make sure the top signifier is going towards the top camera of your phone. Just place it over the phone and press it in down into place, just like that. Then take your screen protector and make sure that the Little one tab is on the underside of the screen. We're just gonna peel that off. Then place it down in the guide. And drop it into place. Then just let it adhere to the screen. And then just take your two fingers, push down on the screen and lift up on the guide. Being very careful not to take the screen protector with it. So that is pretty interesting. I've never tested a screen protector that looks like this before. It's meant to give it like this mirror look. You can see exactly 
what's in the screen there and it gives it like this kind of purplish tint it's very interesting to say the least but installation was super easy we do have a slight gap around the phone so hopefully it should be case friendly and it's also got a little cutout for your camera as far as touch goes feels pretty smooth just like the glass that's on the phone let's see what the screen looks like so screen looks pretty clear there might be a slight slight tinge but um, it works perfectly fine and when you're looking at it I mean there's definitely a, a mirror like effect that you can see in the phone so you can definitely see yourself very easy so if you want to use the phone like a mirror you can definitely do that with the screen off it does kind of change the color of the screen a little bit but you can very easily still see what's on the screen touch working perfectly fine let's put our fingerprints in So fingerprints seem to have gone in very easily. Let's test them out. Fingerprints working perfectly fine. No problems with fingerprints. That is awesome. Very cool. Let's put it in our case. As far as fingerprints goes, does seem to do a pretty good job at fingerprint rejection as well very nice and it looks like there still is a slight edge on the bottom on the right side and on the top but it's pretty flush with the case on the left side so it's just a tad off but it still works with this case again this is the Spigen rugged armor case in case you're interested but yeah so it might be case friendly with your case the only way to tell is to to try it yourself so let's move on to the drop test Start off at two feet. And that's all she wrote. So that didn't last very long. This is on par with some of the worst tempered glass screen protectors I've ever tested for drop protection. So let's move on to the scratch resistance. So we're gonna start off with a level five. And then move on to a level six. And then finally a level seven. So let's take a look. As you can see, there's no scratches at the level five. There are a little bit at level six and about the same at the level seven. I couldn't press very hard because my fingers were sliding down the Mohs pick, but you get the idea. So that's pretty unfortunate because the screen protector was pretty cool. It did work really well with the fingerprint sensor. It did seem to be pr a pretty case friendly, but the drop protection is absolutely horrible. I would definitely tell you to stay away from the screen protector and I'm going to give it a thumbs down. And then here we have the Casemate Flexi Shield screen protector. So it comes in one big packet. You get an installation guide, an installation mat, one screen protector, and an installation packet. So first we'll put down our installation mat. Then we're going to take our guide. We're going to take off the top to expose the little posts. Then you're going to push the little USB type C connection into the bottom of your phone just like that so then you're going to take your screen protector and we're going to line up little holes at the bottom here with the holes on the guide make sure you put them on the posts closest to the phone not these back ones then place the guide top back onto the guide just like that and then pull the number one and line it up with your phone once you have the guide in place, just run your finger down the middle over the screen portion here. Then you're gonna take your squeegee, put it behind the line here. We're gonna lift up on number one and just make sure the screen protector goes up and over your phone and just press out. And it looks like it didn't line up perfectly, which is awesome. Then take your guide off. I'm gonna turn your phone around and we're going to take out this little piece here. We're gonna pull that back, take your squeegee, put it behind the line here. Make sure the screen protector goes up and over your phone. You can pull out your guide and just squeegee out the rest of the way. Once you're done with that, very carefully peel up on number three. So that wasn't the best lined up installation because 
the guide was kind of crinkled down at the bottom and it looks like it put a crease in my screen protector as well as you can see down at the bottom here so that's definitely not good and it's not totally lined up with my camera hole either it was when I put it down but when I squeegeed it out it kind of got misaligned so that's definitely not good the screen protector is grippy it's not slippery or I mean it's not slick like the glasses I don't know if you're gonna like that or not it looks like the protector has a gap at the bottom because it's misaligned and maybe a slight gap on one side here but there's absolutely no gap on the top and no gap on the left side so it's probably not going to be the best for every case either so as you can see it does look nice and clear as far as touch goes it is nice and responsive no problem there and for fingerprint rejection it does seem to pick up some fingerprints not horrible but because it is like a little more grippy it's going to pick up fingerprints uh, a little worse than normal let's put it in our case so it looks like it comes right up to the edge on the left side pretty much up to the top there no gap on the left there's a slight gap and on the bottom there's a bigger gap so it may or may not be case friendly with your case again you're just gonna have to try it out let's register our fingerprints okay that went pretty smooth let's test them out fingerprints seem to be working just fine so because this is a film screen protector it's going to protect your screen from scratches but the screen will scratch fairly easily and I'll show you what I mean by that here I have a level 2 Mohs pick which is just plastic and as you can see it marked up the screen pretty good now those will probably heal I don't know if they'll heal totally um, but this this is a self-healing screen protector and that's why it kind of looks like that if we just wait a couple minutes those should pretty much go away so this isn't a horrible film screen protector I probably would not recommend it myself uh, just because of the, the way the installation was I definitely don't like a misaligned screen protector that really upsets me and they only give you one screen protector so if you mess up that's pretty much it <laughs> You're, you're done. So fingerprints seem to be working pretty good. And again, like I said, if we take a look at that, as you can see, it's, it's healing definitely a little more uh, minute by minute. So those should disappear in not too long. But I would probably tell you to stay away from the screen protector, and I would give it a thumbs down. Then here we have the Whitestone Dome UV Gen Film. So we get two installation packets. A UV LED that will need a power source. It uses a USB Type-C cable, so you can use either a power bank or a wall adapter for your phone. A squeegeeing and installation guide, and two screen protectors. One thing to note, just make sure that you don't install this when there is sunlight coming down on your phone because it will prematurely cure the adhesive. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to clean off your screen. Then take your little foam pad and you can put it down on your table. Then take your little installation guide. Make sure that these little posts are facing upward and that we're going to use the little C portion of the installation guide. You want to push that into the bottom of your phone just like that. Then take one of your screen protectors. We're going to peel off the white tab here, which is underneath your screen protector, just like that. Then line up the holes on the screen protector with the posts on your guide, making sure it doesn't touch your screen. And then hold the tab up here, and we're going to place it down on our phone. Try to align it the best you can. You can use the little camera hole as your guide. Once that's down, you want to take your squeegee, and we'll just squeegee out these bubbles 
kind of make sure that it's in the correct place before we permanently stick it down on your phone. I would also take your squeegee and kind of squeegee down the line in the middle here. That should kind of alleviate the line that might be on your screen when we're done. Then once you do that, take your squeegee, put it behind this line here. We're going to lift up on the tab. Make sure it goes up and over your screen and just squeegee out. Just like that. Then we're going to turn your phone around. Lift up on these little posts here just to kind of release your screen protector. Pull out the guide. Then take your squeegee, put it behind this line here, lift up on the tab. Make sure that plastic piece goes up and over your phone and just squeegee out. Just like that. And then finally, peel off the little front screen protector here. Just be sure not to peel off your screen protector with it. Now we do have a little line in the middle of our screen there. We can kind of try to squeegee that down the best we can. Whitestone does say that the line should disappear in a couple days. So the line does kind of disappear a little bit, but there is still a slight remnants of that line. I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera. It's very slightly there. If you look at the phone dead on, you won't see it. The only time you're really gonna see it is if you hold it to the side and look off in the sun. But it's very faint, it's not horrible at all. As far as the lineup goes, it's lined up perfectly on the phone. It looks like there's a slight edge on the top, very slight on the bottom, and a little bit on the sides. As far as touch, super slick. Very, It's just like the glass that's on your phone. It does have a cutout for your camera at the top. As far as ping fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up um, just a little bit of fingerprints, but you can just easily wipe those away. Not a problem at all. So now we need to cure our phone. So we're going to cure the top for 60 seconds, the middle for 60, and the bottom for 60. So take your UV LED light, put it over the top of your phone, and then just pr double press on the power button. It'll automatically shut off by itself so you don't have to time it. Then do the middle. And then the bottom. All right, so that's done. So now let's register our fingerprints. So this screen protector seems to play really nice with the fingerprint sensor. Let's test them out. Yes, and it's very fast too. So that is definitely a plus. As far as touch goes, again, it's nice and smooth. Touch is working perfectly fine, no issues there. It is nice and clear. Let's put it in our case. So it looks like it comes right up to the edge of the case, which doesn't bother me as long as there's no lifting and I don't seem to see any here. So that is definitely another plus. Looking good. It does pick up some fingerprints, but you can easily just wipe those away. And again, it looks crystal clear. Very nice. <laughs> Perfect. So if you're looking for a screen protector that works really well with your fingerprints and gives your phone screen protection from scratches, I would definitely take a look at the UV Gen film. So now let's test out some scratch protection. I'm going to start off with a number two, which is pretty much just plastic. I don't expect anything to be scratched on the screen. And I was correct. So no scratches there at a level two. Let's move on to a level three, which is copper. And it definitely creates some scratches there. And that's pretty much just like every other uh, film screen protector. They typically last for a level two, but get scratched at a level three. So not bad. I would definitely give this screen protector a thumbs up.
And then here we have the Whitestone Dome Glass EZ. So here we get an installation packet, an installation guide, and three tempered glass screen protectors. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to clean off your screen and dry it off. Then take your installation guide, make sure that the Galaxy S23 Plus signifier is up at the top going towards your camera, and then just press it down over the phone, just like that. Then take your screen protector. We're going to make sure that this little cutout is going towards the top of your camera on the phone. Then just peel off the very bottom side like that. And then just put it into your guide. Then just run your finger down the middle and it should adhere to your screen. Then take two fingers, press down on your phone, and very carefully lift up on the guide. We don't want to take your screen protector with it, and then remove that. So it looks like it came out pretty good. I don't see any bubbles. This is a full coverage screen protector. It does cover your camera at the top. It looks pretty nice though. Touch, very smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. As far as fingerprints goes, it does pick up some fingerprints, but you can easily just wipe those away. It looks like there is a gap on the bottom, a slight on the top, and around the edges for case friendliness. Let's put that in our case. So it does still have a slight gap on the sides, on the bottom. Uh, just uh, very slight on the top, but it, there's no lifting, so it does fit this case. Definitely nice. So now we'll register our fingerprints. Okay, fingerprints are registered. Now we'll test them out. Fingerprints are working just fine. No issues there. And it is nice and clear. Touch working perfectly fine. So now let's move on to the scratch test. We're going to start off with a number five. And then a number six. And then a number seven. So if we look a little closer, as you can see, there's no scratches at level five. There are a little deeper at level six and deeper than that at a level seven. So scratch protection is definitely on par with other tempered glass screen protectors. It seems to be somewhat case friendly. You'll need to test it out with your case just to see, unfortunately, and the in-display fingerprint sensor is working great with this screen protector as well. So I would definitely recommend this and I'm going to give it a thumbs up. We're gonna start off at two feet Gonna move on to three feet, four feet, four feet. So I definitely do like white stone domes, tempered glass screen protectors. Scratch protection was great. Fingerprint sensor works awesome. Installation was super easy. It just doesn't have the best drop protection, but I still think it's a good screen protector. So I would give it a thumbs up. And then here we have the Big Daddy, the Whitestone Dome Dome Glass Premium Screen Protector. This one does use liquid adhesive. So here we have our installation tray with our bridge, an installation packet, three vials of adhesive, a rubber fingerprint piece, some absorbing pads, a little plastic guide for our speaker, our UV LED, which will need a power source. It uses a USB type C connection. You can use a power bank or a phone charger. Here we have our button and port covers, your front speaker covers, and two tempered glass screen protectors. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to take your stickers. We're going to cover up all of the ports and the buttons. So the side of the phone should look just like that and the bottom just like that. Next, you wanna take your guide here and two of the absorbing pads, we're going to put them on each side and then another one down at the bottom. So it should end up looking just like that. Then clean off your screen with the alcohol wipe and then dry it off. 
Then we're gonna take our guide again, make sure that the little S23 Plus is up at the top towards your camera on your phone, and then just press it into place until you hear the clicks. Should be just like that. Then take your little speaker piece right here. We're going to press it into the top above our phone. Then take one of your speaker cover stickers. We're going to peel it off the sticker here, just like that. And then we're going to place it over our little guide here, just like that. Then I would use maybe a credit card or a squeegee or something like that to kind of just push down the little sticker over our little speaker grill. So it should look just like that. You can also be very gentle and use this too. Then take this little black piece and insert it into the little slots up at the top here. Make sure that you push it all the way in. Then you're gonna take your bridge and put it into the little slots here, just like that. Then take one of your vials of adhesive and remove the pink cap. Put it upside down into the little hole here and remove the black cap. All the adhesive will come out within a few seconds. Then you can put the black cap back on. Remove the vial. and then discard the vial. Remove your bridge, get one of your screen protectors. Be very mindful of the little camera cutout here. That's going to go towards the top of the jig. As you can see, we have the little back here. We're going to peel off the back portion of this, just like that. Make sure you don't touch the underside and then just rest that into the jig. Make sure it's properly aligned. And as you can see, it's resting right on this little black piece here. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to push down on the bottom of the jig, which will move the bubble. We want the bubble to be a full circle right in the middle of these two arrows here. Once that happens, we can remove the little black piece and then let the adhesive flow all over the screen. I, tip I typically like to use uh, maybe two hands to try to manipulate it. It's just a lot easier, especially if it's not on a level surface. But once you get it in there, you can just kind of get ready, push down on the jig. As you can see, the bubble is moving. But again, we need it to be a full circle in the middle of those two arrows. It should touch the screen very soon. Okay and then pull out the black tab. And as you can see, it flows over the whole screen of the phone. Once the adhesive is done covering the whole screen, then you'll take your little rubber fingerprint sensor hole and we're going to place it over where the fingerprint sensor is on the phone. So it looks like it's all done. So now we're gonna place our little pad where we think our fingerprint sensor is supposed to be. Then we're gonna wait 30 seconds. Then we're gonna cure the bottom, middle, and top for 15 seconds each. So put your LED over the bottom and just press the button in once. It'll automatically count down for you so you don't have to. Then do the middle for 15 seconds. And then the top. I would also get a paper towel ready just in case the liquid has gotten underneath. You can have something to kinda quickly clean that up. So now I'll remove the little LED. We'll remove our fingerprint rubber piece. And then we need to remove the phone from the jig. So what I would do is very carefully kind of lift up on the jig with your hands just like this and press down on the bottom of your phone and it should fall through the crack there. And then we're going to have to make it peel off on the top of your speaker here. So just gently press until that comes off. And there we go. So now we'll take a look at the phone. So now I got one of your little alcohol wipes here. We'll pick up the phone and look to see if there's any liquid anywhere. It looks like there is just a little bit on the side here. 
It doesn't look like it got all over the phone, which is nice. So we can gently just take our wipe and kind of wipe down the spots where there's excess liquid. Be very gentle again. And then we can just wipe that down. All right, so once you have that all cleaned up, we're going to do our second curing. We're going to do 60 seconds for the top, 60 seconds for the bottom, and then do it again. Then the bottom. And then one more time at the top and the bottom. All right, so let's take a look at the phone here. Installation was really easy. It went on perfectly in line with the phone, so that is definitely a plus. We have a cutout on the top here for our camera. There is a slight gap all the way around the phone as well. So once you're done with the curing, you can take off the stickers for your buttons and your ports. We'll take a look at the edges here. It looks really clean. Really no mess. Looks very nice. As far as touch goes, feels just like the glass that's on the phone itself. Let's register our fingerprints again. Seems to be working really well with the fingerprint sensor. Very nice. No problems there whatsoever. Let's test out our fingerprints. Super quick. I'm barely touching the screen. Nice. So fingerprint sensor is working absolutely excellent with this screen protector. Let's test out fingerprint rejection. It does seem to pick up some fingerprints, but again, you can just very easily wipe those away. Very nice. Let's put it in our case. So in our case, we still have a nice gap all the way around the screen protector, so it should work perfectly fine with your case, but I can't tell you that for 100%. You're just going to have to try it as far as the clarity goes. Nice and clear. Touch working perfectly fine. No issues there. Very nice. That looks pretty good. So far, so good. So let's go on to the scratch test. So we're going to start off with a number five. Then we're going to move on to a number six. And then finally a number seven. So if we look a little closer here, as you can see, no scratches at a level five. There's a little deeper at a level six and a little deeper than that at a level seven. Again, it's pretty much on par with all the other tempered glass screen protectors. And as far as drop protection goes, you can expect the same drop protection as the Whitestone Dome Glass EZ tempered glass screen protector. The edges of the screen protector are also nice and round, so you don't have to worry about them catching on your finger and being sharp. And if you're wondering how to take the screen protector off once you've gotten it on, and if there's any residue left over, all you need to do is use your fingernail, a pick, or a credit card or something, and just get it underneath one of the edges of the screen protector. All you need to do is then run it down the side and release that adhesive, and just do that all the way around the phone. And then just make sure you get that bubble out of the middle. Very carefully lift up on the screen protector, and it comes off just like that. And as you can see, there's absolutely no residue left on the screen. It's all on the screen protector. The Whitestone Dome Glass is probably one of my favorite screen protectors. I would definitely recommend it, and I'm going to give it a thumbs up. So if you guys made it with me this far, thank you so much for all your support. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if there's a screen protector out there that you'd like to see included in my best and worst videos, definitely let me know in the comments below. If this video helped you out at all, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button. It takes you two seconds, and it really helps out my channel with the YouTube algorithm. So now it's time for me to give you my favorite screen protectors out of all the ones I've tested. And I'm going to break it down into three different categories. One is going to be film screen protectors. Two is going to be tempered glass screen protectors with no liquid adhesive. And three are going to be the tempered glass screen protectors with liquid adhesive. So for the two film screen protectors that I would recommend would be the Zag 
Fusion XDR2 Eco, and Whitestone Dome's UV Gen Film. Both of these screen protectors will protect your screen from getting all scratched up. They're case friendly, they're very easy to install, and they work really well with the in-display fingerprint sensor. For the tempered glass screen protectors that don't use adhesive, I would definitely recommend Amfilm and Spigen's Glass TR Easy Fit. Both of these screen protectors have excellent drop protection. They have excellent scratch protection. They work really well with the in-display fingerprint sensor. They're very easy to install and they're case friendly. So if you want some of the best drop and scratch protection, I would definitely go with a tempered glass screen protector. And then for the tempered glass screen protector that does use liquid adhesive, I would recommend Whitestone Dome Glass. I've always had a really good experience with Whitestone Dome and I've been using them for many years on my Galaxy devices now. They're easy to install, they offer some really good protection for your phone, and they work with the in-display fingerprint sensor. So I really hope you found a screen protector that you really liked. And if you did, let me know in the comments which one and why. I'm really curious to know if it was any of the ones that I recommended. And again, I will be putting links in the description for all these screen protectors in case you guys want to pick them up yourself. And if you guys like me and you want to support my channel, please use those links because it helps me keep purchasing products to do reviews for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification bell to let you guys know when I put out new videos. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Later.